last hole of the day. We dug, I don't know, eight. I don't even freaking know how many we dug. Let's see, four plus three is seven, right? Seven? Can't even do math right now, but our last hole of the day, we found ourselves another boar's head. Not the kind you're thinking either. It's a freaking giant stump or something. Building my own shipping container home. Join me on my journey from construction to completion of my mortgage-free home on a homestead. And welcome back, everybody. I'm now living permanently on the property, but uh, it's foundation day four, and it's a big day, because what do you see over here, guys? What does this look like to you guys? This right here, is a rotary uh, laser level. And uh, this beautiful piece of equipment here is gonna be extremely useful because this thing will shoot a laser level line out in 360 degrees across our foundation, a level laser line, and that over there is the key. This right here is a benchmark. It's a nail hammered into a pine tree and spray painted yellow by uh, somebody from the Department of Health who came out here in regards to the septic system. And the septic system is going to be around where that red flag is right there. And the individual from the Department of Health came out um, and basically did her soil analysis and all the various things that go into the septic system and determine the the height that this above ground mound septic system has to be the way i know the elevation of the septic system is by this nail right there i made a version of the 3d model with a septic system to help me determine what the final elevation of the foundation would have to be in relation to the benchmark nail in the tree I also made this not final diagram to help illustrate the elevations of different elements like the grade or ground, the water table, the septic tank, height of the foundation columns, etc. As always, this 3D model is available to download. It includes details on ceiling and truss systems, foundation specs, internal wall design, and much more. You can also download the final structural plans and drawings for my container home full of a bunch of great details. To download these items, just click the link in the description below. That is called the benchmark. And that's gonna establish the elevation. Now, because my goal is for the container home to be at a higher elevation than the septic system, so that wastewater can flow from the higher elevation container home down into the septic system and then down into the soil the container home and the foundation that we're working on has to be at a high or higher elevation there's a very specific elevation and that's all based on that nail that benchmark so simply put guys we're going to take that rotary laser level we're going to set the laser to be at the exact point of that nail and then we use this fancy contraption here called the receiver. And the receiver is attached to this big measuring rod. And this receiver tells you exactly as you raise it up and down when it hits the laser. And of course, since we set the laser at the nail, when we're at the exact point of the nail. And based on all of that, we can then determine exactly how far we have to dig each hole for the concrete columns that are going to hold up the foundation. Should be a fun and interesting day. We're going to start shoveling now, guys. So, it's hot. It's bright. 
Uh, but let's get to it because I only got 22 days left on the deadline to get the foundation done for the county inspector. So really got to get the ball moving. All right, guys, so we, before we set up the, the rotary laser level to establish our elevation and all that stuff, we created these little things, three by three, right? Pretty straightforward, because that is the footprint of the footing of these concrete columns for the foundation. So we're just gonna go ahead and uh, use these as a sort of way to kind of make a general mark and uh, plumb bob it here, just to make sure it's right over it. Okay, so we've decided to start with just spraying the first four squares. So you can kind of see it all coming together now. There they are, guys. The footprints of the foundation. Uh, but obviously, we're only going to be shoveling underneath this tent. So we'll worry about those later. These are first up. All right, so while my dad uh, begins sort of establishing the, 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 the dig marks around the corner, I'm going to go ahead and start getting the leveling slash elevation in place. Off the top of my head, I'm assuming that the hardest part really is going to be getting this thing so accurate with that benchmark. Let's give it a shot. Okay, so first things first, turn it on. Now it'll begin the self-leveling process. It starts to spin. And I want it to spin at full speed. Let me make sure it's actually full speed. Yep. Full speed. We are now at full speed. So now, there's our benchmark nail over there. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take the reader right here. And uh, this thing reads the laser coming out of there. Now, I'm crouched down here next to the nail with the reader while the level is over there. And now I'm going to go ahead and turn the reader receiver on. And now I'm going to move it up and down until this thing starts beeping, which means I've hit the location of the laser level. Okay. And I'm clearly below the nail. So I'm going to have to bring the tripod up. Okay. So after a few tries, we got it pretty damn close. The laser is now level with the nail, the benchmark. And the number that I am looking for here is the receiver needs to read the laser at 58.5 inches. So you use this ruler thing that the laser level came from and you simply extend this ruler out until you get 58.5 inches. Well, that converts to four feet, 10 and a half inches. So as you can see, here's the four foot mark, eight, nine, 10, 10.5. And as you can see right here, that's 10. This is the 10.5 mark. And the 10.5 mark lines up with this here and so let's see, uh, let's do a quick test here and see, let's go down. Boom. That's about it. Registering off the laser over there. So that is what the full depth would look like here. It's gonna look a lot deeper over there, guys. Oh, foot deeper. So needless to say, this rotary laser level is pretty useful for these kinds of projects. I'll put a link in the description below to an Amazon affiliate link to one from the same producer, very similar features to mine, though it's a different model number and has a larger laser reach. Just check out the link below. It looks like some a dinosaur head with a snout here or something. It's like all I mean, <laughs> my God. Hey, this might be the skull of a horse or something, man. All right, guys, just check this out. 
look how sturdy this thing is. I'm gonna walk on this thing. Doesn't budge. I mean, I'm on the edge of this thing and it basically is just rock solid. Guys, it almost looks like some giant warthog or something. It looks like the head of a gigantic warthog or something. It's, it's a bit creepy, actually. Check this out. If we were to try to just dig around this and move this, it's like this batter board, which is essentially holding a critical string, is like basically being held up by this. <laughs> so there's definitely not going to be any uh, uh, digging it out because we're going to destroy what we spent the last three days doing. So we're definitely cutting its head off. Okay guys, beheading the beast, here we go. Film this, it's pretty interesting. It's like Jurassic Park. Okay, so the thing really was so big. Looks like we found the end of it. So we moved the batter board back. We'll reattach the string in a second. I mean, it's freaking gigantic. There it is. Freaking massive. Just for some perspective. Oh, guys half a day of digging and we got four of these suckers four of these suckers done that being said the elevation of the ground was lower here so we didn't have to dig as deep uh, probably about an hour of sunlight left um, so I'm gonna see if I can knock out a couple more of these probably just one more and uh, that'll be after that it'll be 11 to go 11 left uh, before we get all the holes dug so, here we go. It's almost nighttime, but it's a pretty rough hole. I got it nice and level. Let me show you guys. Level with the laser anyways. Not 100% not perfect, but you'll see that beautiful, fast, bright beep in a moment. Put it over there. Put it over here. That is the end of that day. Five holes dug. Absolutely dead. <sighs> there they are. Well, what's 16 minus five, everybody? That's 11. 11 more of these suckers to go. It's gonna be very intense. I got literally just about, I think 21 days starts tomorrow. 21 days, three weeks left to get the foundation done before the time runs out. 
that's the deadline I was given by the county, so I got that deadline, I gotta get it going. Really the big main next step is a rebar, rebar time. We gotta finalize the, the, the setup of the rebars. And then we gotta find gotta find a good supplier with good price. Gotta find a way to deliver it here. And then I gotta start shaping them and putting them together. So it's it's a lot. But uh, another major milestone accomplished. Um, everything's always seems much more challenging and difficult. Uh, beforehand when you're thinking about it but you just start digging and it just happens all right and thank you for watching in the next episode of think outside the container I'll be assembling the rebar towers and inserting them into the ground just in time for the inspection so be sure to subscribe hit the bell notification icon and click all so you're notified when that next video comes out. As always, anything's possible when you think outside the container.